Good morning. Today's reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 to 25. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you accord, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Thanks Janice. My name's Richard and I'm one of the pastors at Wood Green. Before we look at this passage from 1 Peter together, let's pray. Father, we're so grateful to you for your word. Thank you that while the Bible is written by human authors living in different times and cultures to our own, it is your inspired and inerrant word. So help us as we listen to what you have to say to us now from this part of your word, so that we might live distinctively in our time and culture in a way that honours you. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, depending what research you look at, between 50 and 75% of employees who quit their jobs do so because their boss is a jerk. In a recent survey, UK employees were asked to list the traits of a bad boss. They included lack of respect, a negative attitude, laziness, inappropriate humour, turning up late, a bad body odour. When asked how they responded to a bad boss, 40% said they tried to ignore them, 18% said they gossiped about them, 15% said they resigned to escape them, and 5% said they managed to get them fired. Look, the workplace can be stressful at the best of times, can't it? But if you've got a bad boss, well, it can feel intolerable. But in the passage that we just read from 1 Peter, the Apostle Peter says what to do when your boss is a jerk. In this section of his letter, Peter is urging his Christian readers to live distinctively as God's chosen people. Look at verse 12. He says, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Peter says followers of Jesus are to live attractive and distinctive lives that cause others to seek God. But what does that look like in practice? Well, that's what Peter goes on to show from verse 13, using three examples. In verses 13 to 17, as Duncan showed us last week, Peter says we're to be good citizens. Next week, as we're going to see from chapter 3, he says we're to be good spouses. But in verses 18 to 25, the verses we're looking at today, Peter says we're to be good employees. As AJ has already reminded us, one of the ways Christians are to be different is by obeying those who are put in charge of us. We're to work hard and respect our boss, even if they treat us badly or unjustly or unfairly. In verse 18, Peter addresses slaves. Now, slavery has been in the headlines this week, hasn't it? The pulling down of Edward Coulson's statue in Bristol last weekend has prompted the review of other statues in other cities with connections to the slave trade. And we can understand why. 
It is right that we are repulsed by the horror of the African slave trade, which was so much a part of the British Empire in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. And it's also right that we do all we can today to combat modern slavery, where put people are forced into servitude against their will. And so when Peter addresses slaves in verse 18 and tells them to submit to their masters, well, we can feel very uncomfortable, can't we? Is Peter pro-slavery? Is the Bible pro-slavery? Well, the answer is an emphatic no. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, the Apostle Paul includes slave traders in a list of ungodly activities that are incompatible with the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 21, Paul tells slaves they should seek to gain their freedom if they possibly can. And in his letter to Philemon, Paul tells a wealthy Roman citizen to welcome back his runaway slave, Onesimus, not as a slave, but as his equal brother in Christ. That's why the movement to abolish the African slave trade was led by prominent evangelical Christians such as Will, William Wilberforce. So let's be really clear, the Bible is not pro-slavery and neither is Peter. By addressing Christian slaves, Peter isn't indicating he's pro-slavery. No, he's, he's just being realistic about the situation many of the Christians he was writing to were in. Slavery was one of the most common occupations in the Roman Empire. Apart from the very wealthiest in society, almost everyone lived in some form of servitude to those above them. And slavery in the Roman Empire was very different to the sort of slavery that characterised the British Empire. In his commentary on 1 Peter, theologian Wayne Grudem says this, First century slaves were generally well treated and were not only unskilled labourers, but often managers, overseers and trained members of the various professions, doctors, nurses, teachers, musicians, artists. There was extensive Roman legislation regulating the treatment of slaves. They were normally paid for their services and could expect eventually to purchase their freedom. You see, slavery in the Roman Empire was very different to the sort of slavery that characterised the British Empire and the sort of forced slavery that can still happen today. In the Roman Empire, many slaves lived relatively normal lives and were paid for their services which perhaps explains why Peter doesn't just condemn slavery here and encourage slaves to rise up against their masters. It, indeed, the opposite is true, isn't it? That's what he says. Rather than rebel against their masters, he tells them to submit to their masters, even when they treat them badly. You see, for most of these Christian slaves, it was impossible to change their situation and gain their freedom immediately. And so Peter writes to help them know how to live distinctively in a way that honours God in the meantime. And while the employee-employer relationship we experience today is clearly different, many of the principles Peter outlines in this passage are relevant to those of us today who are in the workplace. Now as then, not all bosses are fair and kind. And now as then, the option of changing our current situation isn't immediately possible for many of us. So how should we respond in the meantime? If you're a follower of Jesus, how can you live distinctively in a way that honours God in your workplace? Yes, even if your boss is a jerk. Well, Peter gives us three principles in these verses. Firstly, the way to honour God at work, even if your boss is a jerk, is to firstly seek God's commendation. In verses 18 to 20, Peter tells these Christian slaves to submit to their masters even when they're treated unfairly, because, he says, if they suffer for doing good and endure it, this is commendable before God. Look at verse 18. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God.' 
Peter says, if you're a follower of Jesus and your boss treats you unfairly or unjustly, or if they're overbearing or unreasonable, you shouldn't rebel or become bitter or resentful. Rather, you should continue to respect them and do a good job. That's one of the ways you should stand out in the workplace if you're a Christian. Now, don't misunderstand me. Unlike slaves in the first century, workers today have a number of legal protections. We live in a society where, thankfully, there's a limit on what a boss can and can't do. There are laws that protect employees from discrimination and harassment and physical assault. And that's a good thing. It's actually an application of what Peter has just been talking about in verse 14, where the state has a God-given role to intervene and punish those who do wrong. So let me say this very clearly. If you're being abused or mistreated by your boss, you don't have to live with that. It's interesting, even speaking here to slaves, Peter doesn't say they have to remain silent if they're being abused or mistreated. He says it's commendable if they endure unjust treatment, but he doesn't say they shouldn't do anything about it if they possibly can. Now, the reality, of course, is there wasn't much a slave could do. Slaves had very few rights in the Roman Empire. In verse 20, Peter gives us an insight into that. He refers to being beaten for doing something wrong. But of course, we're in a different cultural context today. And part of our submission to the state involves upholding the rights the state has given to workers to ensure that we're not abused. However, even with these legal protections, we all know that bosses can still be unfair and unjust. They can still show favouritism, they can still be overbearing and harsh, they can still be unreasonable. But Peter says, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're treated unfairly, you shouldn't respond in the same way everyone else does. We're to resist becoming resentful or rebellious. We're to continue to show respect, even if we get none in return. We're to keep doing a good job, even if our efforts aren't rewarded. But how do we do that? How do you do that when your boss or whoever is in authority over you, in whatever context, is treating you unfairly or unjustly? Well, Peter says we're to look for praise in the right place. Peter reminds us here that while we should want to please our boss, that's a good thing, our priority should be to please God. Our priority should be to seek God's commendation. Our priority should be to live distinctive lives that glorify him. In verse 19, Peter says it's commendable if we endure unjust suffering because we are conscious of God. In verse 20, he says if we suffer for doing good, this is commendable before God. Peter tells us here that when we're treated unjustly or unfairly, either at work or in any other context, and we endure it in a godly way, God is pleased. Peter reminds us here that the only commendation that really matters is God's commendation. If you're a follower of Jesus, your chief concern in everything you do, including your job, should be to live distinctively in a way that honours God. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 22, 23 and 24, the Apostle Paul puts it like this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Paul gives us there the Christian work ethic. A Christian should work at whatever they're doing, whether it be schoolwork, housework, voluntary work, paid work, with all their heart, to the best of their abilities, because they're working for the Lord first and foremost. Peter says, seek God's commendation, work in a way that honours him. Yes, even when your boss is a jerk. But then secondly, Peter also says the way to honour God at work, even when your boss is a jerk, is to follow Jesus' example. In verses 21 to 23, Paul says this, 
To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. The greatest injustice, the harshest abuse, the worst unfairness that anyone has ever faced was suffered by Jesus. The Son of God, the one who committed no sin, as Peter reminds us here, was falsely accused and wrongly convicted and then tortured and executed by those who should have fallen on their faces and worshipped him and recognised his authority. In the person of Jesus, God himself was abused by the very people he'd created. And so if you're being treated unjustly or unfairly right now for doing the right thing, God knows what you're experiencing firsthand. But did you notice in verse 21, Peter says, to this you were called. When we put our trust in Jesus, we're called to follow him. And part of what that means is at times being misunderstood and suffering unfair treatment and even persecution. In John chapter 15, Jesus told his disciples they should expect unfair treatment for following him. In verse 20, he said, remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. You see, if you're a follower of Jesus, you will be treated unfairly. But Peter says we're to endure unjust treatment like Jesus did, patiently and resolutely. We're to follow Jesus' example. But notice why Jesus was able to endure suffering in this way. In verse 23, Peter says, When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. When Jesus was treated unfairly, he was able to endure it without retaliation because he knew God was a just judge. AJ reminded us of that in the family talk. Jesus was able to endure suffering because he knew there would be a day of reckoning when God would punish sin and injustice. And we can have the same confidence. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 we're told, people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. You see, there is such a thing as perfect justice in this world. One day God, who sees all things, will judge justly. Which means that when we're treated unjustly, whatever context that is, including at work by a boss who's a jerk, we don't need to retaliate. We don't need to get even. Instead, we can continue doing the right thing, knowing we can entrust the situation to God, who will one day deal with all injustice and right all wrongs. Look, if Jesus was able to endure the injustice he endured, because he knew God would one day judge justly, so can you and I. And so Peter says when we face injustice or unfairness, we're to follow Jesus' example. We're to endure it patiently. We're to remember that God is just and one day he will right all wrongs and so we can leave the matter in his hands. But then lastly, Peter also says the way to honour God at work, even when your boss is a jerk, is to rejoice in saving grace. Killing the Son of God was the greatest injustice in human history, and yet this moment of greatest injustice was also part of God's gracious provision for our greatest need. In verse 24, Peter reminds his readers what the cross was all about. Look at verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. It's easy to point the finger at a boss or anyone else who's guilty of treating us unfairly. But we are reminded here that we are all guilty of treating God unfairly. Theologians sometimes talk about common grace. Common grace is the way God blesses everyone on earth 
regardless of how we respond to him. Whether we accept his authority or not, we're all recipients of his generosity, of his blessings, of his common grace. In Acts chapter 17, verse 25, Paul told a group of unbelieving pagans, God gives everyone life and breath and everything else. You see, whether we accept or reject his authority, God is good to us all in so many different ways. All the good things in our lives that we take for granted are, are grace gifts from him. And yet, by nature, we all treat God as if he's a bad boss and rebel against his authority. And the Bible word for the unjust way we treat God is sin. And our sin is serious because it puts us at odds with God. But Jesus came to free us from the penalty our sin deserves and reconcile us to God. In verse 24, Peter puts it like this. He himself, that's Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross. On the cross, Jesus bore our sins. He was condemned and rejected so that we might be forgiven and accepted. And so if we return to God, we experience not only his common grace along with everyone else, but also his saving grace. Throughout these verses, Peter draws on words and images from chapter 53 of the Old Testament book of Isaiah. And in verse 25, he uses a particularly striking image from Isaiah 53. He reminds his readers they were like sheep going astray. But when they returned and put their trust in Jesus, they gained a shepherd. They gained one who would oversee their souls. And the same is true today for anyone who stops rebelling against God's authority and returns to him and puts their trust in Jesus. If you live distinctively in a way that honours God, there will be times when you are marginalised or overlooked or treated unfairly. And because we live in an imperfect world full of sinful people, the workplace is not always easy. There will be times when you have a bad boss. There will be times when you don't get the bonus or promotion you deserve or were promised. There will be times when you face redundancy despite doing your best and working hard. But if you've put your trust in Jesus, whatever else happens, you can rejoice in God's saving grace. You can rest secure because you have a good shepherd, one who is overseeing your life and your future and more importantly, your immortal soul. You are secure. You have one who will never leave you and never forsake you, one who will lead you faithfully through whatever valley you're called to walk through, no matter how painful or hard or unfair it might be. Peter says, if you want to honour God, especially in the workplace, even when your boss is a jerk. Focus on God's commendation. Follow Jesus' example and rejoice in saving grace. Look, in a moment, we're going to sing together of our dependence on Jesus by declaring all I have is Christ. But before we do that, let's pray, shall we? Using the prayer points that will appear on the screen. And look, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, you might want to use these moments of reflection to return to him, to ask him to be your shepherd, to be the one who oversees your soul, to make you secure for all eternity. Let's pray.